Hello and welcome to this technical training video. I'm Jeremy Cooper with Sabre Consulting. Today we're going to look at how to assign and change VLAN port assignments in Juniper EX switches. We're going to look at the two main methods and those are uh, configuring uh, interface by interface. We will also look at how to use interface ranges. Um, so an outline of what we're going to do is we're going to use VLANs 110 and VLANs 140 and we're going to start by putting port 0 onto VLAN 110 and port 1 on VLAN 140. Then we'll look at how to change VLAN port assignments once those have been configured. Finally, we'll look at interface ranges and how they can simplify configuration and consolidate uh, how interfaces are configured. Because, for example, in, in Junos, um, voice VLANs and spanning tree settings are not applied at the, con at the interface level, but are actually have their own separate location within the configuration hierarchy. And so using interface ranges can both simplify configuration and potentially prevent misconfiguration. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the CLI now and get started. So... Here I am in Secure CRT, consoled into a Juniper EX2300 switch. We are currently in operational mode, but we'll type edit to get into configuration mode. So the first interface we're going to look at is GE000. So I'll type edit interfaces GE000. And if I issue a show command, I can see uh, under unit 0, which is the default unit, we have the interface configured for family ethernet switching, which is layer two, and currently storm control is enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and type edit unit zero and then family and a real quick question mark um, shows us that we can do ethernet switching, we can do INET, which is IPv4, INET six, which is IPv6, as well as ISO if we're doing IS to IS routing or of course in PLS. So we'll go ahead and do family ethernet switching and we'll now issue the two set commands to configure this interface to be a static access port on VLAN 110. They are set interface mode access, enter, set VLAN members VLAN.110. That's the name I gave to the VLAN. And if I issue the show command, I can now verify my work. Now, I like to go ahead and type up to so that I get back to the root of the interface in the hierarchy and type show. And now I can see everything uh, about the interface. So for example, if we had a description applied at the physical port level, we'd see it. Or if we had, for example, maybe uh, manually configured this interface for 100 megabit or half duplex, then we would see that information as well. So now we'll go ahead and configure GE001 for VLAN 140. So edit because I'm already in interfaces, we'll just type GE001, and I can type dot zero instead of unit zero, if I prefer that, and then we'll do family ethernet switching, enter, and we can apply the set commands as two separate lines, or we can put them on the same line, and so we'll do this uh, here for this one. So set interface mode, helps if I can type, interface mode, access VLAN members VLAN.140 and we'll do up to again and show and we can see now uh, this interface has been configured. Now let's say we want to change GE001 from VLAN 140 to VLAN 110. We'll go ahead and go back into edit unit 0 family ethernet switching and the uh, the first way I want to show you how to do this is we'll actually type delete VLAN members VLAN.140, press the up arrow, change 140 to 110, control A to get the cursor to the front, and type set. All right, up to and show, and we now have the interface configured for VLAN 110. A more efficient way to do this is by using the replace pattern command, which allows us to uh, just do this a little faster. So we do replace pattern 110 with 140 and then do a show and we've now configured the interface for 140. Now, in the event that you wanted to, let's say you're re-IPing your network and you're changing VLANs as well, if this replace pattern is done at the root of the interface hierarchy, then we could change the VLAN for every VLAN 110 interface at a time. So that is good, it's flexible, but it also means that you need to be careful when using replace pattern and know what level of the hierarchy you're, on, you're in 
and what effect that's going to have. So I'm going to go up back to interfaces and now we're going to create a couple of interface ranges. Now the advantage of interface ranges is that we can create a range, configure it exactly as we want it, and then apply individual interfaces to the range. This becomes extra handy when you consider, as I said earlier, that voice VLAN and spanning tree configurations such as uh, in Cisco we call it spanning tree port fast, those are not configured at the interface level, but at a separate level in the hierarchy. So we can do that much more efficiently with a range. So I will type edit interface dash range, and I'm going to give it a name, data. Press enter, and I'm now in that part of the hierarchy, which I'm going to now create. Uh, edit unit zero family ethernet switching. I'll do a show. It's currently blank, so I want to, I want to go ahead and set storm control to default. And then we will do set interface mode access, set VLAN members VLAN.110. Now I need to apply uh, this config to an interface. So we'll do set member. Oh, I, I got to go up to back to, the, back to the physical layer of the interface range, if you will, and type set member GE002. So now I have the now I have port two configured as a member. We will want to go back to the top of the hierarchy and we'll go ahead and go into edit protocols RSTP and we will type set interfaces data. So now we've configured uh, all of the interfaces for RSTP and then we can do, press that up arrow again, do my question mark and you'll see we have the ability to configure the port as an edge. And this is uh, Juniper's terminology for what we call spanning tree port fast in the Cisco world. We'll go back up to the top, edit switch options, and we'll type set VoIP question mark interface. So see, this is where you can either spy a voice VLAN for specific interfaces, or we can do an interface range, and you see it right here, data, set VoIP interface data question mark we'll do VLAN and in this case uh, for my demonstration VLAN 130 is our voice VLAN and then we're going to do forwarding class and the best choice is typically expedited forwarding enter so now we have configured the data interface range for both voice uh, VLAN as well as for spanning tree so now we'll go to edit interface interface range and type cameras and we'll go ahead we will go ahead and put port 3 into this interface range so well before we we'll go ahead and do that but then we've got to configure it set member GE003 and then edit unit 0 family ethernet switching set storm control default and set interface mode access VLAN members VLAN.140 up to and show there we go now if we wanted to move an interface from one range to another you just simply have to delete the port from the original range and then move the port to the new range All right. so to wrap things up we have demonstrated how to configure and move VLAN port assignment on a per interface as well as an interface range basis. And we have also explained uh, many of the advantages of using interface ranges over per interface configuration. This ends this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And please consider subscribing so you will see additional videos as they're published. Thank you.